Welcome back to the Shaw's Law interview series. Today I have Chicago Cubs organizational infielder Zach Short with me. What's up, Zach? What's going on? Thanks for having me. So for those of you who don't know, we're just going to give some quick background on Zach. He played at Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. He batted 290 with 15 home runs in 171 career games and was drafted by the Chicago Cubs in 2016. Uh, did I miss anything of importance, Zach? No, not much. It feels like a long time ago, though. I'll tell you what. What's been the biggest adjustment on the field from working your way through the minors? Yeah, um, it's just how much faster the game gets, you know, and I can relate this to you with basketball. It's just, you know, you know, every level you go to, guys just get bigger, faster, stronger, and it's it's kind of, you know, adapt or die, you know, especially with the game has been changing in baseball. It's, you know, it's very data driven right now and you know you kind of have to figure out a way to stand out you know 5'10 180 pounds you know I got to do one thing or another to, to make my name out there and you know like I said it's just every level just gets tougher and tougher and you know like I said all the data now guys are throwing harder you know they're hitting the ball harder and further so it's like again you know it's just adapt or die and you know it's you can you can you know attest that to the real world too you know in any sport in any job it's just figure out a way to do it so speaking of adaptability you're listed as an infielder you've primarily played shortstop but there's definitely been some second and third base mixed in how's that been adapting to playing all over the field yeah that's tough you know uh being you know growing up playing a bunch of different sports kind of helps that you know you're kind of thrown into the fire, you know, every season, just like a completely different game. And that's kind of what it is when you're going from short second to third, you know, obviously on TV and on the outside looking in, it's like, oh, you guys are playing, you know, basically the same position. But I mean, that's tough, man. It's, you know, you see the lineup the day before or whatever, and you see you're playing different position, you know, that next day you have to completely switch your early work, your routine going in, you know, you have to check your scouting report to see where you're going to be playing for some guy where it's, now you're stuck in the same position every day. It's like clockwork, but you know, your whole mentality has to change, and it's tough. Um, that's why you know a lot of guys, you know, they struggle when they get out to the big leagues because you know they're they're moving around everywhere. They're because you know they have some, you know, guys who've been in the big leagues for years, and you know they're not moving their position. So you have to figure out a way to get there. You know, and being, you know, being able to adapt like that, it, you know, it pays dividends for sure because you you're just a different position player you're playing different positions just opens another spot for you but it's definitely tougher than you know playing the same position every game for sure also on your minor league experience you've played in quite a few places including iowa and tennessee yeah um what's been your what stands out give me a place that you've played that really stood out to you yeah, Iowa, you know, you think of Iowa and you think of cornfields and just absolutely nothing. And Iowa was probably one of my favorite cities I've played in so far. It's, you know, we were in Des Moines, which is the capital, and it's just a small city, but, you know, it's right near a few schools. And, you know, every day, I mean, usually in minor leagues, you know, the weekends, you, you'll get some fans. Um, but, I mean, Iowa, we had, you know, 10,000 fans every night, and that's kind of unheard of. You know, it's just... It's it, it, you just don't expect Iowa to be that kind of city place, and you know it's very surprising in a very good way when we got there. And you know all you do is hear great things, and you don't believe it until you see it. So I, I mean, and then you know down south in Tennessee and all those places down there, that's a different breed for me. You know I'm not a country boy by any means, so you know it's kind of, it's kind of shocking when I go down there. I'm not in my element. Um, but it, it's, it's pretty cool to see all the different places you go, for sure. So I heard Iowa's nightlife is underrated. That, that's how your answer sounded to me. <laughs> Yo, there's a couple <laughs> colleges. There were a lot of fans. Yes. Yeah. I was, was kind of I. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't bad, for sure. <laughs> there's no minor league season. So what are you doing to stay prepared? Yeah, so I was under the impression, you know, um, that I was going to be going because obviously baseball's playing right now on the other sport. Um, you know, and they have like a 60-man pool they're allowed to have. And, 
you know, I'm on the 40 man, so I'm kind of, you know, pretty close to the big leagues at this point. And, you know, just some business decisions that, you know, I wasn't taking um, right away to go play. Um, but, you know, I've been hit with my brothers, um, you know, playing with Pat, you know, doing our early work with him, you know, our defensive work, hitting all the time. Um, but it's just, you know, I have no control over it. So it's, it's kind of tough to not be playing right now. Um, but, you know, I'm just doing what I can to stay ready, working out, you know, um, but I can't really do too much. You know, I just have to control what I can control and, you know, I guess enjoy the time that I have home right now. Cause I'm not, you know, it doesn't really happen very often. All right, so you mentioned your two younger brothers and Pat. Is Kingston a budding baseball hotbed? Dude, you know, we had some good teams growing up. There was a bunch of good guys, you know, we had on one team or another. And it's, so, it's pretty underrated, honestly, in every sport. You know, you hear, I mean, you know, it's a small town in Kingston, obviously. You know, if you're playing basketball and, you know, you're going to play pickup, it's competitive, it's good in any, like, any sport. You know, it's, it was always, you know, you know, when we were, you know, growing up playing, it, I mean, there's fist fights happening all the time. You know, it's, it's competitive, man. That's what, that's, you know, it molds you to the kind of person and player you are. You know, I know that's where Justin got his from. I know that's where you got yours from. And, you know, it's, it's coming from, you know, this small of a town like that. But like you said, you know, those athletes that come out of here, they're pretty good. When you're not on the baseball field, what do you like to do? Golf. Golf, man. Golf and shooting baskets. Shooting golfing balls. Um, you know, I, I shoot with Brady all the time at our house. You know, we have a court here. Um, you know, whenever you guys were playing in the winter, I would go show up and just shoot when, in between in between uh, runs with you guys. And I just love being around basketball for sure. You know, that was one of my loves growing up. But right now, you know, I've been, I've been golfing my ass off um, outside of, you know, staying ready in baseball. But... Definitely, you know, golf and basketball are my two my two other hobbies that I love outside of baseball for sure. All right, All right for so those that don't know, in high school you had a reputation on the basketball court as a sniper. <laughs> so the compound has a basketball court. Who's been the biggest threat to you as a shooter? Yo, Dakota is six eight and. He, he can shoot. So, you know, we had, we would have just shoot free throws all the time. And, you know, I made however many. And he would try, we would just compete every day in it one way or another. And, you know, I, I didn't lose. We can tell him that too. Um, but <laughs> it was competitive. And he, you know, someone for 6'8", you don't really think of someone who can shoot like that. He can shoot it pretty well. All right. So, my next question is a theory that I've had, and I just want to get your input on it. Yeah. Sports is a lot about muscle memory. So you are able to shoot the basketball really well. But you're also able to throw the ball from point A to point B relatively accurately. How are you as a golfer? I am... Um... See, it's not fair for me because I grew up, my dad was a, you know, a golf pro and I basically grew up on a golf course. So, I mean, I'm, pr- I'm pretty good. I don't want to, you know, boast or anything, but, you know, I'm pretty competitive when it comes to that too. Um, but I mean, I've played golf my whole life, you know, guys now, especially during this time, they're trying to pick it up. You know, we play with Micah all the time, you know, and he's out there going to the range all the time. I'm like, bro, I feel so bad. You know, he wants to be so good, him and Pat. And, you know, they're, they're kind of just starting to pick it up. But, you know, they've gotten so much better. But it's just so hard to pick up a game like that. But I was lucky enough to play growing up. And, that I mean, that's kind of where I got it from, you know, just playing every day growing up. It's definitely a lot easier to do that than pick it up in your mid-20s. So my theory is about certain people, especially professional athletes, having elite muscle memory. So for you, learning how to shoot a jump shot that goes in consistent, consistently might come up a little bit quicker for you than for me. So just like how you pick up a golf club and you can find the swing and you go, oh, this swing is right. the swing I need. And your muscle memory locks it in quicker than the average person. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's, again, playing basketball too growing up. You know, I, I can go out and shoot right now and I'm you know, like, okay, that, that kind of feels close to what it was a few years ago. But you know, I, you know, if you don't play for a while, it kind of feels a little foreign, for sure. Um, but, you know, kind of if you keep going and, and, you know, shoot, if I were to shoot every single day, I think I would, you know, I'd 
I would like to think that, you know, I could pick it up again and, you know, get to close to where I was and we were playing every single day. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of athletes, you know, they really do have high muscle memory where it's, you know, they can kind of pick up anything. And if they've done it before or if they haven't done it before, they'll kind of figure out a way to do it. All right. And then just to – can you explain how the compound came about, the compound podcast? Yeah. So – when we were in Arizona, we were in spring training when, you know, Corona came over and we, we got locked out and we kind of got close with Ian Hat last year when he was in AAA, um, me and Dakota. And, you know, we were kind of joking. So he stays at a family friend's house, pool house in Arizona for spring training. And he had us over for dinner one night and he stays in the pool house, like I said, but the main house is huge. You know, it's like a million dollar home. And, we were kind of joking, like, oh, we're moving in, Ian. Like, whatever. He's like, yeah, okay. So when this kind of – when we got shut down in spring training, he extended the the uh, the um, invite to us, and we kind of just ran with it. You know, we didn't really expect to be there for two months. We were there for two and a half months or whatever. And when we first got there, he was like, hey, we're making a podcast. And, you know, I was you know, naive. I was like, why? Like, we have nothing interesting to talk about. Like, we're boring. You know, all we do is play golf and play baseball. Like, this is Dakota Mekis, correct? No, Mekis. Mekis. I told you that was going to happen. <laughs> no, so yeah, so Dakota and I and Ian, and then when Dakota and I got there, he, Ian was like, yeah, we're going to make a podcast. And, you know, I was just like, why? Like, I didn't really realize, you know, in Chicago for the Cubs, like, their fans are so, like, the, the fan base is so huge. And, you know, they just ate it up, you know, and it's been cool to – you know, get to something like this where I, you know, you've been doing it a lot longer than we have, but it's like, it's cool to, you know, do something you've never done before. You know, like when was the last time you've done something for the first time? And, you know, when we got there and we started doing it, I was like, it's pretty cool. You know, we got to talk to some cool guys, you know, get some really cool insights on, you know, players, like what their routine is and things like that. But since then, you know, we've kind of just ran with it and it's, it's been surprisingly, you know, very interesting and fun for I'm not going to let you just quote Drake and let it slide. When's the last time you've done something for the first time? You thought you were going to get that off? No, man. I, I swear, but, uh, his, name, his name's been in my head because every time I go on Twitter or something, I can see him getting made fun of for that route he ran in that music video. Oh, man, that was a poor route. <laughs> All right, and then just, I know your time is super valuable, so last question. New York or Chicago pizza? New York, and it's not even close. Oh man, you just said those Cubs fans were rabid. You you yeah, want me to edit this out? Yeah, that's that's the that's the one thing I'll put my foot down on. It's not even close. Zach, thank you for your time. Can you just plug your socials for them so they know where to find you, where to follow you? Yeah, Instagram it's I think it's at Z Short underscore four and Twitter is at Z Short underscore twenty. Thanks for having me, bro. Hey, I appreciate it. This has always been this was fun. This was episode two of the Shaw's Law podcast interview series. Thank you to our guest, Zach Short.